Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth video in the video series I'm putting together where I'm converting a Hobby King HK450 GT uh, into a fly barless model using the Taro ZYX as the uh, three axis gyro. Okay, this video is going to concern itself with the electronic setup. Uh, so that is radio settings, installing the USB driver and using the Taro ZYX USB software to set up the gyro. By the end of this video we will have a helicopter that uh, is ready for its maiden flight. Okay, I'm using my Turnigy 9X in this project as the uh, radio. Uh, it's actually had a free sky conversion. Uh, it's using the stock firmware and uh, what I'm going to do now is run through the uh, basic radio settings we need. I'm sorry about the terrible reflection I've got on the screen at the moment. This is the best I can get um, but hopefully uh, with uh, the bit we can see and my waffle it'll all become clear. Right. We need to set up a new model of course, so uh, press the menu bot button, go into the system settings and uh, set up a, a, select the model or set up a model name. I've done one, it's uh, the second one on the list which I'm calling HK450FBL, so we shall use that. Okay model name already done type select okay we need to select heli but no channel mixing so we want the top op option that's heli one okay we can now exit that everything else is as before with the flybard model on uh, the system settings so we can exit that and now have a look at the function settings. Okay, I'll go through these one by one, but the uh, thing I want to say first is that a lot of the parameters such as trim, sub trim, um, and things like that are handled by the gyro. So they should be set to zero. Um, we wouldn't want to confuse the gyro, so uh, Leave, those, leave the trim and the sub trim at zero. Let's go through everything else. Reverse. Reverse, um, we shall leave that for the moment. The first screen of the setup, software setup will tell us what to do with that. So leave reverse. Throttle curve and pitch curve, they are the same for your flybard helicopter. So I'm not going to go into those. Sub trim really important ensure all sub trims are set to zero okay end point adjustment okay have all these at a hundred percent for the time being again the software setup will tell you how to set these right at the start the very first um, screen is uh, setting the endpoints and calibrating them to what the gyro is expecting. Okay. Throttle hold. The auxiliary channel doesn't really matter. Swash AFR, you can't set that up for Heli 1. Dual rates and expo. Right, okay. Let's enter that. The Instructions supplied by Taro suggest 40% on the elevator and the aileron channels. Um, so I'd, I'd recommend that as a starting point. I'm, I've flown one of these Taro ZYXs quite a bit and I'm quite happy with 20% expo on the aileron and the elevator channels. So I, that's what I've set up there. Um, as for the rudder, yeah, I'm going to go with 20% expo as well, uh, for starters, and see what I think to it. Okay, that's all fine. Trim. Again, your trims should be set to zero. 
Um, disable any throttle to uh, tail servo mixing. The fail safe that's as before. On now onto the second screen of options. Any hover throttle trim or hover pitch trim that should be inhibited. Trainer mode as before. Display that's just a channel display utility. Timer as before for the flybar setup. Gyro sensing that's your call if you want it to use the Futaba standard. Um, yeah, use it. If not, just use the regular channel 5 percentages. Stunt trim, inhibit, and inhibit any programs. Okay, let's just exit all that. Double check that all your trims are set to zero, which is indicated by that little bleep on this particular radio, the slightly longer bleep. And now we're ready to uh, take a look at the installation of the USB uh, adapter. I borrowed a fresh laptop for that so we can walk through that step together. Okay, here's the uh, Taro ZYX USB connector. Don't plug this into the computer until we've installed the driver. Okay, we're now going to install the uh, USB driver. Navigate to fbl.net.nz and a very useful website will appear. Go to the information link and the first topic setting up the USB adapter. About in the middle of the page there's a link to download the ZYX USB driver. So let's click on that and it will download. We'll just wait for that to complete. Okay now that's completed we can run that application. And it will follow in the steps. It will install the driver required for the uh, Taro USB link. Okay, now that's finished. We can install, insert the uh, USB connector into any USB port, and the driver will install. And that little pop means we're ready to use it. Okay, it's time to install the software application now. I've uh, just unplugged the USB adapter temporarily and I'm going to suggest we go back to uh, John's excellent site fbl.net.nz and if you scroll down to the bottom of the home page, or press the end key, right at the bottom it says here you can download the latest stable version here, or the zip version. I'm just going to go for the uh, regular executable file. And that's downloading now. Just give it 20 seconds or so. And whilst that's downloading, I'm just going to comment that I think this software is better than the uh, Taro software. Um, it seems to be updated regularly, bugs fixed, and seems to be a little bit, little bit more polished version than the uh, manufacturer's version. So I suggest you go with this. Right, that's downloaded now. So let's uh, do the installation, and it's beautifully straightforward. Run. Next, select the folder, or let it do its own, um, full installation, with the English, we'll have a 
the desktop icon as well. Install. There we go. And the program launched at the end. And that's what it looks like. Okay, we're at the stage now where we need to power on the helicopter. Um, and then we can enter the uh, software to do the uh, gyro programming. So let's switch on our transmitter. There we go. Make sure we've got the right model selected. Uh, can you see the screen? Yeah, we're good to go there. And I'm just going to flip the uh, throttle hold on. There we go. Right. Now then, a moment of truth. Power up the helicopter. So I'm just going to add a battery. Screw it down. And now for the uh, power up. Okay, the servos are chattering a bit, but um, it didn't blow up. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to wiggle a few of the sticks, see what happens. Okay, yeah. Okay, so far so good. So, uh, okay, so what we do now is we take our USB programming cable and uh, we plug it into our laptop. There we go, it's plugged into the laptop. And then we take the other end of the programming cable and plug it into our initialized helicopter. Okay, there we go. It's plugged into the bottom of the uh, Taro ZYX gyro. Now we are ready to launch the um, uh, gyro programming software. Okay, so here's the um, software launched and uh, now we're going to go through the programming steps. First of all we need to connect to the gyro so we click on the connect button at the top. Now we need to select the correct COM port. Uh, we can either use in this case COM3 or 4. There is a section of troubleshooting on John's website fbl.net.nz if uh, you come unstuck here. But basically, choose your COM port and click connect. And the lights will go green and the default values will appear on uh, the uh, sliders here. Now let's give this a model name so it's, uh, it's meaningful. So it's HK 450 GT FBL and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the 3D soft preset so I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to save this config file so I'm going to call it HK uh, 450 GT FBL there we go and then we can return to this setting uh, this file at any time. Now we've got the basics done there we need to go into setup and begin to calibrate and set up our gyro to our helicopter. So click on setup. Right now we're into a monitoring screen and it's a case of following the instructions up here. So let's move the sticks as it says and what I'm going to move first is the elevator. So on mode 2, 
That's the right hand stick. Okay. Yeah, that seems all good. Collective pitch. I've got subtle hold on. I'll uh, come back to that. Aileron. Yeah, that's correct. Rudder. I'm moving the rudder now. Yeah, that's okay. And the tailgate. So just let me flick the uh, gear switch. Yeah. Okay, and one last thing. I've just been into my radio and uh, set up a standard 0 to 100 linear pitch curve in my radio setting. So now I'm just going to move the collective pitch or the throttle stick up and down. And as you can see, that slide is working now. So yeah, we've found out that all the sticks move separately and as they should on the screen. Now on to point two. Make the signals move in the same direction as the sticks by using servo reverse function on your transmitter. Right, I'm pushing the elevator stick up now and the slider has gone down. So that means it's wrong. I need to go into the uh, settings on my transmitter, which I'm doing now as we talk. Go to reverse and set the elevator To reverse which I've done now so let's just try it now I'm pushing the elevator up and the slider goes up pushing the elevator down and the slider goes down right so we now need to go through them all methodically doing the reverse so I'll next do the collective pitch that goes up and that's fine so we don't need to reverse the pitch channel that's good. I'll put it back to middle. And of course we'll do the same for the aileron. Yep, that's correct. That's correct. The rudder. Yep, that's fine. And the tail gain. This is less important, but it's, that's in uh, default head hold mode. Yeah, I think that's fine. And that would be rate mode. Yeah, that's fine too. So I only had to reverse the elevator. Okay, so that's the only time you'll do reversing on the transmitter. In fact, all this step is the only time you do any transmitter adjustments. So now we're on to point three. Adjust the signals to be zero using the sub trim setting or trim setting on your transmitter. Okay, I'm going to use the sub trim setting. So let's have a look at the elevator. Okay, it's given us a value of 7, which we need to remove to 0. So, I'm going to go into the menu, the function settings, the sub trim, and just try raising the elevator. That's the wrong way. So, reducing it down, keep going. There we go, I've applied a sub trim and to get this value down here to zero. Now I'm going to go through every other channel just the same and adjust the sub trims to be zero. Except of course the tailgate. Now I'm just going to add a little aside here. My Turnage 9X as I received it from Hobby King was uh, had drifting on the RF channels. Um, I don't know, I think it's a fault with the Flysky system that they went through. So I've replaced the Flysky with Freesky and I get absolutely no drifting of channels. Now drifting of channels would be a nightmare in a flybarless helicopter because the gyro would sense a drift and try and make the helicopter do whatever the drift is trying to do. So if you've got drifting RF channels, stop. 
You ain't gonna win with a, a fly barless helicopter. You'll need to upgrade your RF module or something like that. That's just a warning and a side. Okay, so I'm off camera. I'm just gonna adjust all the sub trims for each box, the collective pitch, the aileron rudder to be zero at the midpoint. Okay, now by looking at the screen, you can see that I've got the elevator, collective pitch, aileron, rudder, all to zero. So I'll set the sub trims in the transmitter. Also, I'm just going to flip the gear switch. I have set the tail gain to be zero at the midpoint, so I did alter the sub trim on that, uh, on that particular channel. Okay, now we've done that. We're now on, ready to go on to part four, which is adjust the signals to be 100 by using the end point adjustment in your channel, in, in your transmitter, when the, the sticks are moved to the end position. So let me do the elevator again. So I'll push it right up to the top, and we don't get 100, we get 97. So we need to make an end point adjustment to make that top value 100. So I'm going to go to the function menu and select endpoints again and on the elevator channel on the elevator channel increase the endpoint until we get a steady 100. You may not be able to get it perfect, that's pretty good, I'm going to leave it at that. And then of course the bottom of the throw. Okay and the top of the throw. And that's pretty good. Now I'm going to do the same endpoint adjustment for all the other channels. Okay, so I've been through the endpoint adjustments. Let's just see how we're doing. So for the elevator, 100, minus 100, collective pitch, 100, minus 100, and back to mid sticks, aileron, so to the right, 100, left, 100, rudder, that's both 100, and the tail gain, well I'm just going to flick the, I've been activated the gyro sensing menu on the um, Turnigy 9X, and the numbers follow the on-screen display perfectly. So that's 36 head hold mode and that's 36 rate mode. So that's pretty good. Okay, so that's part four done. And just at the end then, I snuck in part five. So dial the gain switch of your transmitter to head, ho head hold mode, AVCS mode that is, so that's that. Yeah, the signal of the gyro gain should go to AVCS mode, that's a red LED on the taro gyro and that's fine. Switch to normal mode, the LED goes blue on the uh, taro gyro, just have a look at this as we're going along. And I'll set it to 36 both for rate mode which we're in now and head hold mode which I've just switched back to. So we've finished that, that's the only transmitter adjustments we will do for this helicopter setup. Now we're ready to click next. Okay, this is where we talk about the installation direction. Uh, mine's on the side, mounted to the side of the frame, so we click three, and then click next. Okay, now we're on to the servo type. I've got InnoLab Cyclic Servos and a digital Futaba 9257 clone. So we select the middle option. Tail servo is 1520 
digital and swashplate servos are also 1520 digital so we shall select that option and then click next swash type yep it's a 120 degree CCPM mixer so click on it to double check if you like click next okay now we're on to the servo reversing tab so we need to have a look as we alter the sticks on our transmitter whether things are going the right way so if we move the elevator forward as if we were going into forward flight the rear servo should lift up and the front two should lift down and that's correct if we give it some right aileron the right hand front servo should pull down and the left hand one should push up and as it happens this is correct so I believe this is correct now on this screen I don't have to do any reversing so I can move on to the next screen servo trim okay this is where we adjust, adjust the trims to make our servo horns, the servo arms, perfectly horizontal. It in fact replaces in a flybard helicopter what would be, we would be doing with sub trim menu on the transmitter. You may find at this point that it's you have to reinitialize your helicopter because uh, with all the um, adjustments we've done so far the um, servos are slightly out of position so uh, I'm going to click finish at this stage and I'm going to save my config file So all the work and setup that we've done so far is not lost. Okay, I'm just going to close down the program, disconnect everything, and start over. Okay, the uh, reset was necessary. Um, so now I've reconnected to the gyro and I'm going to go to file and open the configuration file I was working on so that's HK450 GT FBL uh, and open there we go we're back to where we were so back to setup and we've got as far as servo trim right so now it's this stage where we go through and make sure that our servo arms are horizontal at the mid sticks position. So just check your transmitter is set to mid sticks on the pitch, and away we go. Okay, so that's got the front aileron servo horizontal. I'm now going to go through the other servos and uh, the other two cyclic servos and do the same. Okay, so I've set the uh, trim values so that the servo arms are horizontal. 
This is important for when we come to do our mechanical refinement after we've done the first round of software setup where we level the swash plate for example. Anyway, now on to the next tab which is swash travel. Okay, this is where we have our blade um, deflections, the amount of aileron and elevator we get. Um, we can leave this step for now really because we need to measure level our swash plate first. We can, we, I'll, I'll return to this. Collective pitch. Okay, so let's have a look what pitch setting. So you need to move your pitch up and down and observe your swash plate. Now I'm moving it up and I can tell you that when it's fully up the swash plate is down so that's wrong and again when I move the pitch that's the throttle stick all the way to the bottom the swash plate rises up so that's not right so we need to change this number here to a negative value so I'm going to shoot for let's say minus 60 as a starter And now I've got, when I do the uh, pitch on the transmitter, up is up and down is down. So we've got that now moving the right way. So that's that done. Now we're on to tail setup. There's instructions up at the top here. So it says move the rudder stick, adjust the servo reverse, that's this button here to make sure the tail servo adds some direction rotation pitch to the tail rotor blade. So in other words when I move my rudder stick on the transmitter right the tail slider moves towards the hub in or in other words inwards to the tail boom and what therefore when I move the uh, rudder stick to the left the tail slider moves out towards the grips. I've just looked at mine and that's right. Number two, setup number two. Add a value of this, uh, adjust the value of servo trim. Okay, so that's to make the horn position perpendicular to the rod, uh, the pitch rod. Let's just have a look. I'm just going to flip to rate mode so it's zeros. And mine's pretty good anyway. I'm just going to add a tiny bit. Okay, that's mine adjusted. And now we set the limits. Dial the switch to a uh, head hold mode. Yep. Now we're in head hold mode. Move the stick all the way in one direction, which I've done, and set the limit. So uh, I can have a little bit more. Okay, and the other way. Oh, that's quite convenient. 100 and 100 is uh, about right for my helicopter. Okay, so on to the next option, gyro direction. Okay, so we need to check the gyro compensation for the direction of roll. Now, this is quite straightforward. Whatever you do to the helicopter, the gyro should work to keep the swash plate level. Okay, so I'm just rotating it side to side as the gyro is trying to keep it level. Backwards and forwards, ah, it's going the wrong way. 
So I'm going to reverse the pitch. And now the gyro is working to keep the swash plate level. And now for the tail, so if I was to move it as if the helicopter would be turning to the left, the gyro should move in towards the slider, should move towards the boom, and it's not doing, so I'm going to reverse that. So I'm going to simulate a left turn, and now the slider moves towards the boom, so that's correct. And now onto the last step, which causes some confusion, and I shall shoot a little video here, but what should happen is, you should check the Piro optimization, and you start this little test, and the swash will tilt one way or the other, and it should maintain that tilt when you rotate the helicopter. Think of it like this. The uh, swash plate is a compass needle. When we start this check, it will point in a certain direction. We pick up the helicopter then, by the uh, main rotor head, and just rotate it. And the swash plate should continue to point in the same direction, rather like a compass. So, no matter what we do to the helicopter, which uh, by analogy would be the case of the compass, Whichever way we twist it, the swash should still point in the same direction. So I'll start this test and shoot a little video just to show you um, how it all works. So click to start the uh, optimization, check. OK, the compass, the swash is pointing in the direction. I'm going to rotate the helicopter body about the main shaft. And the swash plate maintains that direction. And that's fine. So I can click quick check and finish. So there we have our basic electronic setup done. Now we need to go back and do refine our mechanical setup. So that's level the swash plate, set zero pitch, and investigate our blade deflections and our uh, pitch at maximum and minimum collectives. Also at this point, it's a good idea to uh, save our config file. There we go, that's saved. And uh, if you're ever unsure that an update has been transmitted, just click Force Update. And a blue light will just briefly flicker on the USB connector and uh, your settings are transmitted. Okay, so now we can disconnect the cable to the gyro, close our program, and power off our helicopter. Okay, so we've now done the uh, basic software setup, I'd now recommend that we go through and methodically check and double check all the servo directions and gyro directions. So let's power on the uh, transmitter. Oh, just toggle the throttle hold switch. And of course, power on the helicopter. And just let it initialise. Right, we're in now. Okay, so first let's have a look at the collective. So we'll just increase that, and the swash plate rises. All the way to the bottom, the swash plate lowers, back to mid stick, mid sticks. I'll leave the rudder for a moment till I've moved the camera. Now let's have a look at the elevator. So forward elevator, the swash should tilt forwards. And indeed it does. Backwards. Tilts backwards. Great. Okay. 
And don't worry if the swash seems a little lethargic, that is perfectly normal for these gyros. Okay, so we're going to now apply right aileron and the swash should tilt to the right. Indeed it does. Left aileron, swash tilts to the left. So that's all okay. Now for the rudder, I'll just move the hello. So we've got the tail in frame, so we're going to apply some right rudder and the slider should move towards the uh, tail boom which indeed it does. Left rudder, it should move out towards the grips and indeed it does. Right, just let me uh, toggle the gear to get it back to the centre position. Right, so if the helicopter was to simulate a left turn, so the nose is going to go left, the slider should go towards the tail boom again. So let's have a look, left turn, slider goes towards the tail boom, right turn, and the uh, slider heads towards the grip, so that's the correct tail gyro direction. And if you think about it, the helicopter is trying to counter an external force, and it all makes sense. So. OK, let's just check the cyclic corrections that the gyro is making. So if we tilt the helicopter, the swash should, its first movement should be to try and keep the swash more level. So let's just tilt it back. And then, did you see that? The swash tried to level a little bit. Let's tilt it forwards. There we go. And now it's going back to its rest position. That's correct, and it's same on the aileron side. So let me just move that round. So if we move it one way, the swash tries to react to stay levelish. So let's move it uh, left. And that's correct. Sometimes it's not very a very pronounced movement, um, but this is all set correct now. OK, I'm now going to demonstrate the Piro optimization step with the camera, just because this is a step that can cause a little confusion. Right. I've got the software loaded, the uh, gyro connected to the laptop, and the software on screen. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the box that says check optimization direction. So let me move the uh, camera back to the helicopter. So, right, that's nicely in screen. Okay, so I'm going to check the optimization direction, clicking it now. And the swash tilts, it's tilted backwards. So I'm going to pick up the helicopter by the rotor and rotate it round and you can see that the swash plate is still pointing in the same direction somewhere over here and that means the pillow optimization is correct and we can click quit the check and finish the setup